A couple of years ago, I lived in Calgary. This is in um, Alberta, Canada. And I was walking down the street and there was a whole lot of haze. And the sky looked really nice and I was just like taking pictures for Instagram and I was just like, ooh, this is so cool. And it said smoke. So I thought that that meant that was a kind of, you know, weather term. So I was taking smoky pictures like an idiot because I didn't know what any of that meant. And I was like, hashtag smoke and hashtag smoky. Um, because I didn't know what was going on. So I was putting the pictures up on Instagram, very ignorant of what was going on around me. And it wasn't until a few days later that I found out because um, I tended, at that time, I tended to ignore the news because the news was just always so depressing and I'm a very emotional person. I'm a very, very, very emotional person. If just anything is sad in the news, it will make me cry or if it's happy, it will bring me joy. But I tend to find that the news is very sad, so I would just ignore it. So I didn't know what was going on, so I just thought smoky meant like some kind of weather term, like it meant foggy or something. So it wasn't until later that I found out that smoky actually meant smoke because the forest the the um national parks in british columbia were on fire and that's where it, it was on it there was such a big fire that it was making its way all the way from british columbia all the way to alberta so i was an idiot taking pictures for the gram and not knowing that actually all that smoke was because of the fires in british columbia and i did not like that I did not like that such a huge thing was going on and I was so disconnected with the world that I didn't know until days later. So I'm the kind of person I like to be prepared. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you will know that is a recurring theme. And I wasn't very happy of this whole lack of knowledge. So I decided to do some research to find out where I could get information quickly. Um, at the time, I didn't like Facebook because I didn't. I I still don't use Facebook. I don't like how they they follow everything that you do, and I don't. I don't know if I'm, um I don't think um Facebook owned Instagram at the time. Um, but even if even then, even now, I still just something about Facebook itself. I just don't like it. I just don't have trust in Facebook, so I just didn't want to use it, and I wasn't very connected with my family, and so. I just wasn't connected in knowing. So I found different ways of, of, um, I found different ways of getting information. I wanted to be able to know, like, my first thing was like, if there's a zombie apocalypse, how was I going to know when the zombies were coming? By that time, if I didn't know there was a, a, a wildfire, by the time the zombies were at my feet, that was when I'd know. And I, I have this big fear that the zombie apocalypse is just going to come one day and it's just going to get me. I don't know why. I just It's like my biggest fear. I know ugh, it's not a thing, but it's just like my biggest fear. So I went through research and I found that the best way to get information is Google Trends, which I now have open. Now that I say that, let me just put my phone on silence. It has a tendency to um, ring. So this is just me having th free thoughts. Um, cause a lot, I just, I have a lot on my mind and I just want to just say it now so that it's just out. Um, I found the best way for me to get instantly connected is through Google trends. I don't even know how I found a way to do it where Google will send me alerts for whatever people are, are searching. So if there's a worldwide trend, so if anything is ha happening, if the human collective is looking up something, I will get an alert on my phone so I will know what's going on. And Twitter. So these are the two ways. So if anything is happening, I will know because I did not like not knowing, and that just I don't that freaked me out. I was surrounded by fires. There was another fire somewhere in the U.S., and that was also contributing to the smoke. Actually, I can't remember where the fire was. I think it was like Washington or something. I don't know. But the two fires, and that's why there was so much smoke at the time, which was creating this it was really beautiful to be fair like this amazing halo 
around the sun and and the, it just looked amazing and it's the fire the wood smelled really nice like the burning wood which should have been my first indication but i thought it was just like people were barbecuing because <laughs> it was like summer and it always smelled like burning like wood so i just assumed that it was like um thing like a uh, calgary has a lot of strange weather you should see the clouds there sometimes i would walk and the clouds would look like actual alien ships coming i took so many pictures of the sky because i, w I was just like are you sure these are not alien ships coming to take us like <laughs> like people said that though those clouds were normal they have really strange clouds there like Sometimes I used to hashtag all the clouds La Puta because they have weird clouds there. So anyway, my point is that because of my, um, I did not like not knowing when, when things were happening, I found a way to be connected so that I would always know when anything was happening. So if anything was trending, I would find out. So I went on Twitter I, Twitter would be that I would have to go and look for it and then I would see what was trending for the moment But with Google it would send me an email. So I would receive a, an alert and it would tell me this is trending in Can in Canada and this is trending in the world. So I would know if something is trending Immediately, so if something is trending in Toronto if something is trending Canadian wide or if something is trending in the world so when the pandemic started, I, well, obviously I was already prepared for that because I was already paying attention. But when, when WHO said, this is now a pandemic and, and everybody started looking coronavirus tips and blah, 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 and all those, I knew right away. So when, um, when Kobe Bryant's plane crashed, I knew right away when, when anything happens and people start searching for it, I know right away. Um, so, um, to keep track of things, I now have these two sources, and in the last few days, I've been keeping, tr I've been getting um, alerts. Um, in the last, as you know, we were at home a lot. Um, more country, different countries are treating the pandemic um, in different ways. Um, some countries are more strict about the um, stay-at-home orders than others. Um, I'm here working on my my YouTube channel, so I spend a lot of time um, on my computer, and a lot of it is mental work, which means that I take a lot of breaks because it's very exhausting. And I find myself going to Twitter a lot, which I never used to do. Um, I don't know why all of a sudden I'm there all the time. I don't know. It's just it's so interesting to. I think it's because I like to um, talk to people who have different views because I want to see um, how our views will clash. I'm always surrounded with people who have my same point of view. That's that's how your friend friend group works. Your family usually agrees with you. Your friends usually agree with you. That's just how it works. On Twitter or, or any social media site, Usually when I'm on social media, I tend to um, not talk. I've been on social media f since social media has been a thing. I had my space. I've, I had Facebook when Facebook first came out. I had one of the first Facebook accounts. I never speak because it's always, people are always fighting and I used to be very timid. I am what you call a professional lurker because I don't, I used, I just don't want to, get into arguments with people because people have different points of views and they always just want to like fight and I'm just not interested in doing that although I find myself lately I'm just tired of people's nonsense and if you want to be dumb on the internet I'll I'll get go there with you because I'm pretty sure if you want to one of us is gonna agree with the other and that's how it's gonna be so I've been on Twitter lately just because it's so fascinating to watch people's, the way people's, the way it changes. It's like one minute, it's like 
this thought and then it just changes to this thought. It's so interesting the way human consciousness just changes, the way ideas just change. It's so, I wish I could just map it out. I, I want to go to Twitter and just watch their, their mind map. I'm, I'm sure they have a mind map on what and, and they follow how the human mind just works, the, the way thought just shift it's so interesting to me so i i'm on there all the time because that's my interest that's what i'm doing here that's my my whole youtube channel is about the way thought works the way human beings work so this is just such an interesting place for me and unfortunately in the last little while because i guess people have had we've had a lot of time on our hands and um a lot more a lot of more attention is being put on some um, more pressing topics and um, first we had um, Ahmad Aubrey, um, the young man who was jogging and he got killed. I don't know, before they never used to show these very graphic things. Um, it was so... I try, I, I try not to watch these things because like I said, I'm very very emotional so i i heard i heard about his story it was trending like i said google sends me the alerts i i tried to avoid it on twitter but google's like well you wanted this so you ain't escaping so I, and let me be clear i'm not saying i avoid it because i don't want to know i want to know i'm black so i already know what's going on i've always known what's go what's what's been going on I've experienced what's been going on. I've been spat on and been called an N-word by somebody who I helped, who needed help. It was a white man who needed help. I helped him. Then he spat on me and he called me an N-word. Like, I know what's going on. So when I say I, I try to avoid these things, it's not because I don't want to know. I already know. I don't want to see it because I know what it's, it's going to put this heaviness in my heart. And I don't want to be... I don't want to have, I've brought myself to a place where I don't want to have hatred towards anybody. So I try to avoid these kinds of things and I still see it. Even though I like being on Twitter and I like, I like watching how thought patterns change. It's so interesting to me. And then another one happened. Like, just another one happened with George Floyd. That I tried so hard to avoid watching that because I saw the stills and I'm like, okay, the stills are enough. I, I'm not, I don't need to see more. Like, you can probably hear my voice because I literally just, I just, I gave in and I just watched it. And I said to myself, I've been saying, it's been days and I said, don't, don't watch it. Don't watch it. But if you don't watch the way human beings work, and I'm, I know this, the way we work is we have this mental wall in front of us. Like, it's like statistics. You can know, you know the statistics, you know it, you see it. Like, you know it, but you don't know it until you see it. That's why people, that's why all these people uh, have been saying it online. That's why they, all the, the, um, the Black Lives Matter, they've been saying it, they, they keep saying it, they keep saying it because all the other races, they know it, but they don't know it. You have to see it. It has to be something that you see. You have to like, it has to be something vulgar and, and disgusting. It has to be something so horrible that you can't, it, it has to like shock you and it ha it's like it wakes you up. It's like, it's like, Imagine this, the scariest thing you've ever experienced. It's like that. It's like, for me, I'm terrified of heights. For me, it's like throwing me out of a helicopter with no parachute. It's like that. It's something so, so intense. So that's why I kept saying to myself, okay, you can't ignore it. You have to, you have to look at it. You have to see it. And so I said to myself, okay, you know what? Let's just do this. I watched the video. And I'm just like, I, I heard everything that everybody said. I read all the comments. I listened to everything they said. They said that the man kept his knee on, on George's neck. And I'm like, there's no way. 
Like, you know, I heard, see, like, that's what I'm saying. I heard it, but I didn't see it. You need to see it. Like, he didn't look down. People were telling him, and I heard all of that, but I didn't see it. When I saw it, I'm just like, there's no way. There's, that's, that's, that's horrible. Then, <laughs> that's just so, then I, I listened to his, there was just a small clip of George talking about, um, black youth and that's that's what killed me <sighs> they made him sound like such a monster like they, he's just a man who was afraid for black people in America just a just a, a person who's afraid for black people in America he's, he was talking about how in the video that I saw, it's just a, like a small clip. I think it was like less than two minutes. He's saying how the generation after him, they have guns and they talk about shooting. Then they go home and their knees are, 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 are trembling. And he's like, boy, go home. What are you talking about guns? Just go home. Stop being an idiot. Go home. And one day you're going to see God and either you're going to go up to heaven or you're going to go down to hell. And you're going to have to come to God and have your reckoning. Then I watched this video of him like literally it was in a um you know the the twitter stream and then you just see sorry the feed and you just see him being pulled he's just calmly being pulled and all i can think is him asking for his mom i'm just like this is what did we do that's just so unnecessary because they call the police on him for a fake a, a forgery and it turns out it wasn't even a forgery like you shouldn't, and even if it was a forgery, that's not something you need to die for. Like, I just keep thinking. This is not something you need to die for. People, you only get one chance in life. Like, you know, you only have this one chance. We don't know what comes after. Maybe there's, there's heaven. Maybe there's hell. Maybe there's nothing. Maybe there's a... Uh, 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 maybe we get reincarnated. Maybe there's a a uh, a second Earth, you know, like the in the Japanese anime where you get rebirthed into another life, and maybe he gets to be a, a superhero with a better with superpowers or whatever. We don't know. I don't know. We don't know. We can only assume. We can only work with what we know, and what we know right now is that you get born onto Earth. And you only have as much as up to, up to, if you're lucky, 100 years. But most people don't even get that much. Most people get maybe 50 years. It's up to you to try to do your best with what you have. If you live in America and you don't have white skin, that chance, and if you are male especially, that chance goes down even more. Like, imagine a world where we don't, we're not afraid of each other. Like, why are we afraid of each other? I get it. This is how you, that's what you were trained to believe in. But can you not step outside of what you were trained? Can you not try to open your mind and see beyond? Can you not let skin determine how you treat someone how can you not have the empathy to see that you how can you not like how do you not have the sympathy the empathy to see that can you not put yourself in someone else's place is that beneath you to not be able to see that like i always say to myself put myself in someone else's shoes if i'm gonna treat somebody some way put myself in their shoes how would i feel that if you cannot if you that's the best way no matter what you are taught as a child and if you don't know how to reprogram the way you are taught that's the best way put yourself in their shoes you don't need to know how to to feel you don't need to know how to do anything all you need to know how to do is to put yourself in their shoes Try to visualize. You have that capability. You have a human brain. It is capable of imagination. It doesn't have to be a perfect imagination. You just need to be able to say, 
can I put myself in their shoes? I remember I was watching a TV show. I don't even know what the TV show was. And there was a, 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 a scene. I think the scene was like less than a minute. And it was a scene of a, a, an art piece on the wall. And it had two people. One was a man on his knees with his hands behind his, his um, head. And another was another man holding a gun to that man, to the man on his knees. And the girl, two people were standing in front of the picture looking at that scene. And uh, the girl said to the man looking at the picture, which one would you rather be? I don't even remember what the TV show was. I know I saw it at least I was a teenager. And I still ask myself, who would you rather be? Can you put yourself in both shoes? I always say to myself, can you put yourself in both shoes? That's, that's the biggest thing we need to ask ourselves. When you're doing something, anything, if you don't, if you don't have the ability to feel sympathy or empathy, if you are not able to feel anything, just ask yourself to put yourself in that person's shoes. Because it's such a tragedy that this man had to die. That's just, like, I've, I keep hearing it. We should not know his name. George Floyd should not be somebody we know. He should just be another nameless person going about his business, doing his stuff. He should just be another faceless person walking in the crowd. And yet right now across the country and now... He is literally mobilizing an entire nation. He's mobilizing an entire nation. And you know what? People have been quiet for a while. They've been upset. They've been very upset. But they have been quiet for a while. Now, here's what's going to happen. Now that they've gotten up, they're not going to stop just at racism. They're going to start, now that they've gotten up, they're going to start at everything. Everything that's been bothering them. The, the whole fact that 100,000 Americans have died. The fact that there's a, a racist man in the, as a president. The economy. They're going to go after everything. Now that they're up, they're going to go after everything. They're not going to just stop now. They've gotten up now. They've, they've decided to get up. It's too late now. All they had to do was, all this one person had to do was not kill one man on the street. Like, how cold do you have to be? To just, it's just anyway, I just, I, I've just been really bothered by this. It's just, it's so, I don't even live in America, but I don't think it matters which country you live in just to, to see this and not feel, not feel something to watch this man lose his life over nothing, $20. You would kill a man for $20 when life is priceless. Life is priceless. Life is priceless. $20. You kill a man over $20.